The National Development Plan marks 10 years since it was first adopted as the country's vision. Some strides have definitely been made, but there have also been serious shortcomings. In fact, government is now set to review its capacity to implement the initiatives contained in the NDP during a conference starting today in KwaZulu-Natal. Nyuko Mabunda is the Acting Deputy Director General with the Public Service and Administration Department and joins us now via our video link to take stock of this gathering and what else lies ahead. Nico, great to have you on the program. Thank you so much indeed for making time to speak to us. And I guess as we take stock of this conference, it's worth reminding uh, each other of what the priorities under the NDP actually were. It had to do with quality basic education, a long and healthy life for all in the country, all people in South Africa made to feel safe, decent employment through inclusive growth, and the list does go on. There are about 14 of them. The ANC in the past has admitted that the country has fallen seriously short in realizing this vision. I wonder what government's position is on that score. Well, uh, good morning and uh, good morning to your viewers as well. Uh, well, we have to be honest about uh, the challenges that are facing government. Uh, unfortunately, I can't speak on behalf of a political party, I'm a, a public servant. Sure. So I'll, I'll speak to government, uh, if you allow me, please. Um, so what, what we are planning to do to, uh, today and in the next uh, two days after today is to look at the progress that we have made in all those priorities that you have highlighted uh, that the NDP has uh, identified for the country and to say in the next seven years or eight to seven years that uh, we have until 2030, what is it that we can do? Uh, so that we, 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 we right the wrongs of the challenges that uh, have led to the hollowing of state capacity, to delivering on the promises that were uh, made in 2012 and going back to 1994. So what we are doing as part of the conference as, the, as government today, led by the Department of Public Service and Administration, is to say in 1994, these were the challenges in terms of state capacity, but more specifically, government capacity. What are the challenges in terms of human resources, whether the institutions that we have speak to the challenges that are currently faced by society. Because all of those things that you have highlighted, um, inequality, unemployment, uh, gender uh, challenges, um, poverty and so forth, um, a, a, a non-growing economy, they all, one way or the other, require that we have address all the challenges that are identified in Chapter 13 of the National Development Plan, which is about building an ethical developmental and, 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 and uh, ethical uh, capacitated and developmental uh, sure. uh, um, uh, uh, government. Yeah, I, I hear that. I, I was hoping, though, we'd take stock of why things haven't gone according to plan, at least given where we are now and how much time has lapsed. I mean, from 2012, for instance, to today, we've got more time behind us than we do ahead of us before we reach 2030. In other words, if the current trajectory continues, we're almost certainly never going to realize any of these, uh, of these visions. No, no, that's very true. So, so what, what we have done, we have done um, uh, uh, an analysis of the challenges that we have. I'll speak, uh, I'll start with the part on the human resources part of the, of government, because that's where uh, uh, issues of capacity start from. The first thing is that on average we have uh, public servants that have about three degrees on average, which means that we have people that are qualified uh, and have the degrees that they need to do to do the job. However, their degrees, what we find is that mostly are not linked to the jobs that they are supposed to be doing. And that goes back to the issue of um, uh, the skills availability in, in, in government uh, and in the economy. Because that's where you have people that are educated, but they're not employed in the fields that they're educated in. So that's one of the biggest challenges that we have. And then there's the issue of limited managerial capacity. So most people are scared to manage and lead. And that when we have those issues, it leads to low productivity and no consequence management across the, the, the economy and across the, 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 the government. So those two, from our side, in terms of um, government's capacity to manage and develop uh, and deliver on the promises that were made, uh, is, is, is two of the biggest challenges that we have. So we are proposing that 
we come up with a new integrated human resources strategy across that will provide guidance across the public service that will link to specifically in individuals personal development plans to say you are employed as Andy led to be a, a, a manager in this specific area. You have the degree, but what are the competences that you need hmm. so that we are able to deliver on those type of things? So those are the quick, um, uh, the major challenges that we have and, and we're trying to look at. And sure. obviously, if you look at the uh, professionalization framework of the public sector, it also addresses the challenges that the diagnostic review of the that led to the development of the NDP uh, came up with, and that was done in 2010 uh, already. Sure. And it's there are issues of political uh, administrative interfere, uh, uh, interface, um, and the professionalisation framework has now introduced um, the the head of the public administration in the presidency. Um, new uh, minimum competences that are supposed to be met before you become a manager uh, and a leader in the public service. And now we're talking about issues of um, uh, 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 mentorship and coaching for new managers so that we start understanding what the challenges are uh, so that we can deal with them. Lastly, sure. uh, Nico, the yeah. issue of... Uh, uh -huh. Apologies for interrupting you there. I think I got the gist of you know some of the issues that you're tackling. Let's speak about the conference with the time we have left, if we can. Um, okay. You know, academics often speak about developmental plans needing to be as inclusive as possible. In other words, you don't get only people in higher echelons of government deciding um, through some kind of top-down structure what development looks like for certain communities. It leads us to questions around who will be part of the conference that's taking place in Guazul Natal, and more importantly, the kind of voice they'll have around what went wrong and what it needs to happen in order to fix that. All right. No, that's, that's a very good question. So building from the NDP and how the NDP was, was developed, you'll remember that there's the, um, uh, there was the National Planning, there is in fact the National Planning Commission, and, and based on that, it was uh, the civil society, there's uh, business representatives, and there's academia there. So it's not a mistake that we have, uh, uh, we are delivering on this conference in partnership with the, provi the provincial government of KwaZulu Natal, the National Planning Commission, as well as the Uni uh, United Nations Development uh, Program, as well as the University of KwaZulu Natal. Uh, the, the School of uh, Build, Environment and Development Studies. So it is very diverse. We have everyone that is supposed to be here, including civil society, including business. And uh, I hope that you, one of, you or one of your colleagues will be coming through to cover uh, the program because we have the premier speaking, we have um, uh, the, the, the uh, leaders of uh, the deans speaking, we have the lecturers, we have uh, master students that are actually doing the research, uh, and we have uh, both senior managers as well as uh, junior colleagues that are, are actually delivering the work. Because one of the challenges that we have noticed is that you are quite correct. We have a lot of senior government officials speaking to themselves, mm. and we need to start uh, opening up voices out there so that even those that are implementing the policies that the, the government approves or the senior officials approve are part of the review, and they can say in the field these are the challenges that we have, and, um, sure. and this is what we think you can do. The other so, obvious, yeah, got you. The other obvious concern, of course, will be around ensuring that this doesn't become yet another talk shop. You know, again, the ancient old critique around how South Africa has always done its business, at least at government level, is that the planning and the talking happens pretty well, actually, impressively in some instances. It's the implementation and the accountability that falls short. And, of course, I imagine we don't want a repeat of the past couple of years if we are to, in fact, you know, uh, achieve some of these objectives in the NDP. So, so one of the key things that we have noticed, personally, I believe that if a policy can't be implemented, by the way, it's not a good policy. So right. whatever argument that they have uh, on South Africa having the best policies, if you can't implement them, then they are not good at all. So what we are doing, we are looking at, uh, in government, we have what we call uh, service delivery departments as well as uh, policy departments. So we are looking at both the policy department um, uh, challenges in terms of the development of policy, issuing norms and standards, issuing directives and so forth. And, uh, and beyond that, what the challenges are in terms of, uh, what the challenges are in terms of 
the, the service delivery departments um, and, and trying to marry those two. And if you look at how we have structured the program and including uh, uh, both junior staff and uh, senior staff uh, as well as academia, we are now even looking at the partnership between uh, coming out of this program. There will be uh, development of implementation plans. There will be a book that will be published out of the uh, uh, papers that are, are coming out. And in implementing the uh, and in the implementation part of it, uh, the cabinet has resolved that whatever comes out of this should be a joint implementation plan that will be led by the DPSA as well as the NP, uh, the National uh, 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 the, the the NPC, the the, the planning commission, mm. to ensure that there is more uh, evaluation, support, and monitoring outside of government to ensure that this is not just another talk show. We certainly hope so, especially when you consider what's at stake and how many people rely on this plan finally coming Definitely. to fruition. For now, let me thank you for your time, Nico Mabunda. I really do appreciate it. Nico is the Acting Deputy Director General with the Public Service and Administration Department. Once again, thanks very much indeed.